Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples, on a kind of a muggy, miserable Florida Friday. I really have to say, it's just not very nice. Uh, you can see all the cars are covered in mist. Uh, pretty much, you know, kind of an annoying thing for me that I have to contend with when I'm doing photographs and videos. Uh, this car, as I photographed it, was getting covered in mist. But what the hell are you going to do? You just have to keep going. It's going to be hot today in the mid-80s, which is just unacceptable for January, even in Florida. Uh, if it weren't for the weekend where we have a forecast of 40 degrees on uh, uh, Sunday morning low, uh, I would be miserable. I would be absolutely beside myself. But uh, we do have that little light at the end of the tunnel, so it could be much, much worse. Uh, we do have a couple of birds, uh, you know, a scout again. There he is keeping an eye on me. He's got another friend, a wingman, so to speak, uh, looking down, but uh, hopefully they keep their distance. Today, I have this 2000, oh, there's another one. Look at that. No, I didn't see him or he just landed. One of the two. I'll right, we'll keep an eye on him. Uh, I have this 2001 Chevrolet Corvette Z06 Coupe. Uh, this car is the performance car bargain of the century. I mean, it's an amazing piece and it's affordable. And those two things alone are enough to make it notable. Uh, back in 1990, what was it, nine, when the uh, C5 Corvette, I guess 1998, the C5 Corvette came out and it was a bit of a sea change for Corvette. I mean, it was inarguably uh, the best uh, you know, that's not a fair statement to call it the best Corvette, but certainly it was one of the best handling, best balanced Corvettes ever made. Uh, you know, some people would argue there are much better Corvettes, the second generation, beautiful, first generation, ah, that was crap, but neat car. Uh, but anyway, the C5, despite what people may think of it now, uh, was a giant leap forward in terms of construction, in terms of quality, and in terms of performance. And uh, if you remember, the king of the whole Corvette, the ZR1, uh, came out, to, well, actually there was, a, you know, that's the thing with Corvette, they have all these little option codes and packages that, you know, the revelers of the Corvette that the true faithful speak like they were some kind of sacred Indian burial ground. You've got your L88s, your LS7s, your you know Z06, your ZR1, your ZR2, your DUIs and IUDs and your ZZ Tops. You know they they just speak of these things because they were interesting packages. And this was not the first Corvette Z06. In fact, in 1963, uh, Mr. Duntoff, the father of the Corvette if you will, uh, created a Z06 package for the uh, second generation Corvette. And it consisted of some interesting things like a giant 35 gallon fuel tank so you didn't have to stop in the pits very much, uh, very advanced drum brakes. I know that's a bit uh, of a uh, ironic statement, but at the time they were quite advanced. They had vents in the front, they were finned aluminum, they were pretty badass for drum brakes, uh, beefed up suspension, that sort of thing. And that was meant to be a race package. And this Z06, which came out in 2001, uh, was also meant to be a race package, and they certainly succeeded. Uh, what they did was they took the, um, what do they call it, the FRC, uh, that was the fixed roof coupe, 98 and 99 and 2000. Uh, uh, the guys at Chevy decided to have sort of a, it was sort of a weird mix. You could call it a bargain basement Corvette because it was a bit of a stripper, but the point wasn't to make it cheap. The point was to make it light and nimble and, you know, desirable by the track guys, but it didn't sell very well. So they took it to the next level in 2001 and created this car, the Z06, the successor truly to the C4 ZR1 in terms of performance, power, trackability, that sort of thing. It didn't quite have the same horsepower as the uh, as the original ZR1. Yeah, it's not the original. That's the thing with these damn nomenclature things. Anyway, the famous ZR1, the, uh, you know, the C4, the first one that came out, they didn't make like nine of in 1970. You know, there was another ZR1 and ZR2 back then. <sighs> anyway, um, uh, this was the successor to that, and it would outhandle it, it would outperform it in every way but top speed. Uh, it was fast as hell, uh, it braked quicker than just about anything else on the road, and uh, held almost 1G on the uh, on the lateral testing. So uh, the thing was an incredible performer. 
Uh, they bumped the LS1. They did some tuning and tweaking to it. They took the LS1, which obviously is a fantastic motor, and bumped it 35 horsepower through a variety of tweaks. Uh, bigger uh, intake, hotter cam, different valves, different pistons, different compression ratio, uh, all sorts of little bits and pieces to really increase the horsepower and the torque. And it had matching figures, 385 horsepower and uh, 385 pound-feet of torque. Uh, the next year, they bumped up the horsepower again to 405, another 20 horse, which is fine, although uh, the O2s and 3s did have some valve issues. But uh, that said, when you're talking about 20 horse in an LS1, it's pretty ir irrelevant. I mean, you know, the most minor of tweaking, you get another 100 horse out of these things, and uh, you can make them into pretty much anything you want. Uh, but anyway, this thing comes out in 01, and everybody goes absolutely nuts for it, and they should. I mean, it took it to the Europeans again for half the price. Uh, it outperformed, uh, well, you know, it certainly got close to the 911 Turbo. Here's our detailer coming in, an excursion, I let him drive. You know, it seems to me that the bigger and dumber the vehicle, the happier he is. So uh, that's all I have to do to keep him chipper is put him in some stupid looking dump truck with leather in it. Uh, a little bit like a woman in that regard. Uh, stop it. I, you know, it's true. You can call me sexist, but it's true. They love the SUVs. Anyway, uh, this thing took it to the Europeans. I mean, it was 0 to 60, and I want to say 4.2 seconds, quarter mile of 12.7, uh, top speed limited by gearing of about 170. It hauled ass, and uh, Chevrolet took a lot of steps to lighten this car. Uh, they, uh, you know, used thinner glass. They used the fixed roof coupe design. Uh, they used lightweight wheels to become more unsprung. Uh, they got rid of some of the accoutrements. They put it a fixed antenna and the first mass-produced titanium exhaust system uh, all shaved some weight off the car and made it much more nimble on the racetrack and of course that's what uh, guys with a track hobby are looking for uh, you know this is a bit of a holy grail car in terms of trackability you've got you know two kinds of people at the track and they're interchangeable because they tend to go back and forth with each other you've got the Miata guys and the Corvette guys and uh, you'll find that sometimes uh, one moves to the other and another Another one moves to the one. And a good friend of mine, Robert, who's, um, I won't call him a nice guy, in fact, that would be the furthest thing from the truth. Uh, but uh, anyway, he got us into the Miata racing, and he has come to visit this Corvette now like three times. He has no interest in seeing me. He just stops by here and visits this Corvette, uh, pondering what kind of a track car it would make for him. So uh, this thing does have a certain credibility at the racetrack. Uh, you can see the styling is absolutely, I think, gorgeous. Uh, you know, there's some argument about does it need all these big overhangs. You've got about a foot of bumper at the back. You've got about a foot of bumper at the front. Uh, if Chevy had trimmed some of that off, this thing could have been a lot smaller. But you have to understand, of course, that it's American. And, uh, you know, again, people like big, giant, crazy, stupid-looking things here. So we have big parking spaces. We have big roads. And uh, this car fits right into that just fine. Uh, I do love the notchback kind of fixed roof thing where you get an actual useful trunk. You see the mist on it. I'm the second guy to sign this car now. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but uh, anyway, extraordinarily handsome, and uh, I think red is quite a good color for this. The, I suppose yellow is probably one of the more sought-after colors, and uh, black is, of course, always cool, but, you know, the song wasn't about a little black or a little yellow Corvette, and uh, I think that does fit. Uh, the brakes, they got bigger. They painted the calipers red. They adjusted the camber. Uh, you know, it's kind of tough to see, but the wheels are cambered out a little bit to keep it more planted on the racetrack. Uh, Goodyear came out with a set of Eagles made specifically for this car. It's got uh, 17s up front, it's got 18s in the back, and it was not terribly expensive. For just under 50,000 bucks, you got yourself a Corvette that could really take it to cars that cost two or three times as much. It would outperform a Ferrari F360 and uh, certainly do so more reliably. So uh, anyway, let's just get into this thing. We're going to start in the hatch, uh, trunk, whatever you want to call it. Sun's coming out, so it's going to wreck our day. 
Okay, so I do love the trunk. Uh, I think it actually works better, and it's something that Corvette people usually aren't used to. Uh, this guy's put in some sort of a nice little divider. That usually isn't there, uh, but I think it works out pretty good. Not only does it divide the trunk from the inside, which uh, they don't come that way from the factory, uh, it would probably cut down on noise. Uh, but anyway, you can see everything nice back there. Uh, to save weight, they did away with the run-flat tires because those are heavy, and instead put on, uh, there's a little inflator guy under one of these pockets back here so uh, anyway all very nice stuff and plenty of room in the trunk for whatever you want to put in there bazookas rpgs golf clubs bags of salt for your water softening system uh, people you've kidnapped all kinds of stuff is going to fit in that trunk have a look under the hood before the sun comes out and ruins everything oh god open that door a little too abruptly everything's so light on this car I do like the forward tilting uh, uh, hood. So anyway, there it is. There is an LS6. Uh, that is essentially an LS1 with some tweaks. It's distinguishable by virtue of the red valve covers. Uh, and this low mile, this thing is 39,000 miles and it's mint and it grew up in Florida. So uh, everything's real nice under there. Uh, but anyway, that thing, 385 horse, 385 uh, pound-feet of torque, uh, it was, you know, at today's standards, it doesn't sound that that fantastic, but at the time, uh, it was exceptional. And you're talking 1.1 horsepower per cubic inch. You're talking a, uh, an incredible uh, power to weight ratio that uh, the thing weighed about 3,100 pounds and it would just propel it in such a fantastic manner on the street or the track as to uh, not make anyone feel like they were wanting for horsepower and again that's part of what makes these things such a terrific uh, performance bargain today a real you know a kind exotic if you will like the Optima battery that shows me the guy cared uh, but anyway everything nice and clean under there you see that tuned intake manifold and uh, of course all the uh, little upgrades that made this thing more potent and more peppy than its uh, standard C5 engine. Oh, these up front are kind of cool. You see that little mesh thing? These are often missing on cars that have been beat up. Uh, that is the air intake for the car. And race cars do have these little firm, tough wire mesh things generally on the air intakes to prevent, you know, clag and rocks and track degree degree track debris from flying in there and taking out the radiator so uh, that is a very useful proper thing to have and uh, you know kind of a neat feature on this car uh, you see it also has beneath that more intakes uh, to cool the brakes so front and rear brake cooling on this car uh, that was the other thing they added was that little vent there uh, right at the back of the rocker panel which would direct air into the rear brakes and keep them cool uh, they just simply do not fade I think when car and driver tested this thing uh, it had about as short a 70 to 0 braking time as any car they'd ever tested uh, which is of course pretty neat stuff uh, you also get z06 badges on the fenders to distinguish it from the standard corvette and uh, otherwise it does uh, look like a pretty neat piece and of course, through stiffening and other stuff, they did make the uh, door opening bigger, so even old guys like me can get in and out of this thing pretty easily. Uh, you know, if there's one complaint people had about these cars, it is the um, uh, fit and finish and quality of the interior, uh, which is a little bit weird when you think about it. I mean, if you're going to trim money and cut costs in order to make the thing a bargain, which they did, uh, they shouldn't necessarily do it in such a way that it goes where uh, you spend most of your time. But anyway, that's what Chevy did, and we all have to live with it. Uh, that said, in this particular example, uh, it's held up much better than most that I've seen, and I presume that's because of good ownership. The door panel is nice and tight. Uh, all of the power windows and other controls, nice. There's no rust on the speaker grill. Uh, everything just working absolutely lovely. Not even little air pockets on the armrests, which you see sometimes. And uh, I haven't touched these seats by Leather Medic or anything. And uh, they're in great shape. Very, very nice. Just a nice little bit of patina. Let's get in and fire it up. All right, so you stick the key in this guy on the dash. You get a little bit of binging. I'm gonna go ahead and get my seatbelt on first so it doesn't beep at me more. And we'll see what we got. All right, so clutch in. Let's fire it up. 
and there is a nice healthy little growl from under the hood and coming through that titanium exhaust uh, you definitely get a vibe that this isn't the standard LS1 uh, you could really kind of hear that hot cam in there it's about five degrees uh, tougher than the one that came in the standard Corvettes uh, you could not get heads-up display there's just all kinds of stuff you wouldn't get in this car uh, as a weight saving so not only no power antenna but uh, no heads-up display either which is just fine uh, so anyway uh, Z06 only instrument cluster uh, there you see just 39,000 miles of the clock of this thing it's got a Z06 badging it's got a carbon fiber look uh, background and of course it gives you all the gauges you need in a minute you've got your uh, your water temp your oil pressure uh, voltmeter uh, fuel on which it's a little bit low get you actually I shouldn't say that this car gets great gas mileage like 28 on the highway by virtue of the gearing uh, was actually considered a uh, fuel efficient vehicle by the government when it came out so uh, again kudos to Chevy for stuff like that uh, anyway nice little simple instrument cluster and lovely leather wrapped steering wheel you know easy to grip uh, not as sporty as I would have expected in a car like this but again I think they did a nice job of keeping the cost down they could have added all kinds of stuff and made it a lot more expensive uh, I love the big bulging fenders up front the low sleek hood uh, if I turn on the lights there it is the last Corvette with pop-up headlights Oh, what a shame that we've missed out on that. Uh, I really miss pop-up headlights on cars. I've really been enjoying driving that Datsun that has them. Uh, but anyway, there they are. And of course, when you pop them up, you do get crappy wind flow. So I guess you don't want that. Uh, you can go through your different um, trip computer crap over there with the buttons. Uh, here's a, you know, this, uh, this might as well be in an old Buick Riviera. They really haven't changed this Delco uh, Bose uh, head unit in many, many years. But, you know, it's fine. Uh, it does what it needs to do. Let's see what we got for music. That is, yes. Commercials, obviously, always. Tom Petty, he gets on my nerves sometimes. I'm not glad he's dead or anything, but he gets on my nerves. Uh, here you've got dual side climate control, nice cold AC. Uh, this is the kind of cheap stuff that people complained about in these cars. First of all, you've got a cup holder here that maybe would hold a Dixie cup. Uh, I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. I wouldn't put a can in there and fly across the car. And, uh, you know, this thing over the ashtray is just, that's ah, cheap and horrible. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, the guy did add an accessory cup holder, which actually works pretty good. Uh, you also have active handling control. It's special in this car. Uh, you can turn it off. You can have it in competition mode. Uh, or you can just have it on regular. And that's going to keep you uh, on the racetrack whether it even is supposed to know the difference between good drivers and idiots like me. So uh, if you're going in a corner properly, a little bit of drift, you're making the right counter steering moves, counter direction stuff, uh, it's not going to interfere. Uh, if it thinks you're about to tank into a wall like I might be doing, then it will interfere. So it's a pretty clever thing. Uh, we do also have a little center console here not very deep but uh, certainly big enough to hold some kind of a you know polymer nine millimeters so you'd be happy with that also a little 12 volt outlet and you know whatever it's all very fine uh, in here you've got a set of books special z06 badging and uh, as i said i'm not the first guy to sign this car uh, on the airbag over here uh, signed as jj lato of all people i mean when i first saw it was signed i didn't look at it that close i thought oh, it's got to be some kind of corvette guy well I, it's not really i mean jj lato if, you know if you're not familiar uh, was a finnish race car driver and has a fascinating story uh, just one of these guys who's a real natural talent i mean Countries like Finland have an unnatural share of professional drivers because the roads are so shitty. Uh, they're cold, they're icy, they're elevated, they've got corners. And, you know, by the time you're 16 years old, if you haven't learned car control, you're going to careen off some kind of a cliff edge and die. So, uh, you know, even your standard grocery getting housewife can probably outdrive you on a racetrack if she's from Finland. But anyway, JJ Lado, he came up through uh, Formula Four. Well, of course, started with karting, you know, just like all those guys, your Schumachers and your Eddie Irvines and your Johnny Herberts. And, you know, they all kind of came up the same way. And uh, Lado was a pretty cool guy. And he was found by a guy named, uh, was it Kiki uh, Rosberg, uh, you know, famous driver, tried to help his career. He got him into um, the early, you know, 
you do testing for Formula One, then uh, then Ferrari called him and asked him to test for Formula One, which is about the greatest thing that can happen to a young driver. And uh, he did that for a while. That launched him into another team. Uh, you know, it, Formula One is all about having money and cars, the right car, the right money, the right team. And if you don't have that combination, you're not going to do much. But uh, apparently he showed his skill enough to finally land a role uh, at Benetton with Michael Schumacher which is a terrific drive and unfortunately right as the season began at Silverstone he tanked into the wall uh, at very high speed and shattered two vertebrae and essentially that ended his F1. He tried to come back in F1 but it never really worked for him again. Uh, the, the career sort of came to a grinding halt after after that accident which is just a genuine shame. However, and I know I'm rambling here but you got to fit all this in in a short time, uh, uh, he did then find his way into the uh, Deutsch Touring Car Series, which is neat. You have to look it up if you haven't seen it. And uh, then found his way into a Le Mans car, late entry, McLaren F1, if you remember those things with the three seats and the wheel in the middle, and was the most instrumental guy in winning the 24-hour of Le Mans in uh, 95. So an incredible feat for a guy, uh, for a driver. Uh, he did win Le Mans again a second time, uh, you know, in 2004 or 5, I, I can't remember, it might have been for Cat, I know it was Audi R8, Audi R8, and uh, it just had, an, had a neat, neat career until he got very drunk and drove his boat into a bridge and got arrested and, uh, you know, charged with killing his buddy, and then that got appealed and quit, and anyway, long story, but fascinating guy with a great career, uh, very interesting to read. In fact, I'll put a link in the description of this car uh, to a really neat interview I uh, read last night uh, with him that's uh, just fascinating to read. Uh, this car grew up in Central Florida, hung around Sebring, and uh, I guess as a result, um, uh, JJ uh, and whoever owned it came into contact and, uh, and the airbag got signed. <sighs> anyway, after all that, let's go for a spin. There's Jason the mechanic, looking very peppy as usual. I mean, that guy comes in in the morning like Mary Lou Retton. At least we got nice heat built up. Uh, this does have a very good six-speed manual gearbox. You couldn't get an automatic in this car, and uh, it works fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work so well when you're cross-shifting across your body with the left hand, but we're going to give it a go anyway. And we've got some interesting cats out here. I know buyers, and they don't look like buyers, although I do appreciate Cadillac Alante, I have to say. weed our way through all this. Now, I don't know if you just saw that, but it gave me the first to fourth thing, uh, which uh, is a famous Corvette um, C4 and C5 deal where it kind of, if you're not under high revs in first gear, it'll force you into fourth gear to save fuel. Uh, a lot of guys, certainly performance guys, instantly disable that. So uh, the fact that it's still going in this car tells me it was owned by somebody who didn't didn't care much about the performance, was probably more into just cruising it around. And that said, this car will cruise around incredibly well for a, um, you know, for a car that has this capability. If you just want to drive it like a, you know, an old lady, it's going to be happy with that. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> Tires loose, traction on. Yeah, I mean, it's just unbelievable. You couldn't, uh, <laughs> you can't keep the wheels on the pavement. I have to say, this is why I like Miatas. You can have fun at 40 miles an hour. Uh, and this thing, the minute you tap it, you're doing 80. You just can't help it. Let's turn our traction off. Maybe we can get into competition. How do we do that? I don't know, we're just gonna turn it off. I'll try not to crash. But anyway, I mean, you felt that acceleration, that power. It is so addictive. It is so addictive. It just, you feel like a young kid with a firecracker in his hand who just wants to go out and do some damage. <laughs> I mean, for the love of God, is that fun. Can't even get power to the pavement. 
Anyway, that's all I'm gonna do to beat up your new Corvette. So if you buy this thing, that's it. I didn't, I didn't trash it too bad. That's the worst I've done. And uh, you can go have your own fun doing donuts in the Walmart parking lot or, you know, highway on ramps. This thing will distort your face under acceleration. It is a fast, fast car. Um, so there it is, 2001 Chevrolet Corvette Z06. Pretty neat piece. This one for sale at Audi Europa, 39,000 miles, uh, red and black. Yeah, terrific car, absolutely great condition. Uh, neat sort of deal there with the sign by JJ Lado. If you don't like that, of course, just throw in another airbag cover. It's probably 50 for sale on eBay with all the nitwits who crash these things. So. Um, if you have an interest, you can give Marty a call, 239-298-8000, or check it out at aenaples.com. Uh, thank you very much for having a look. I appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you with something else fun next week. Take care.